one, two, three. Hey everyone, it's Chris Keppen, the artist behind an ethereal fire. Today, that didn't work. Today, I'll be showing you how to create my thin line signature halo that you'll see throughout many of my artworks. I'm really excited to be sharing this with y'all and uh, let's hop into it. And one quick note, the subject in this image has already been cut out from the background through it, a method called alpha channel masking. Now, you don't have to do this specifically. You can use select subject and duplicate the layer, but you do need your subject separated from the background inside of Photoshop in order for this tutorial to work because we will be working behind the subject layer, but in front of the background layer. Just wanted to note that. Let's hop in. We are now inside of Photoshop's 2023 version, and we are going to start by creating a new layer between the background and the subject layer. This is going to be the base of our halo. Start by selecting the elliptical marquee tool and holding Alt and Shift while clicking. This will create a perfect circle. You're going to start from the center of the subject's face and pull outwards. There should be approximately one hand's width between the subject and the edges of the halo. From here, you are going to fill in the selection that you just made by choosing fill and either choosing black, white, or gray. It truly doesn't matter. You are also welcome to use the paint bucket to fill this in. The next step is we are going to reduce the fill, not the opacity, but the fill of the layer down to 0% so it becomes completely invisible. Double click next to the name of the layer in order to open the layer style menu. There are a lot of options here, but we are specifically looking for stroke. Click on that and it will open this screen. Now, the size of your stroke will vary depending on the size of the image that you are working with. I find between 3 and 5 pixels usually works. Next, we are going to select our color for the halo. To do this, click on the box next to the word color, which will open the color selection menu. In this tutorial, we are looking to create a metallic gold halo. So a nice cheat code for this is to select the model's skin tone between a highlight and a midtone. From here, we like to push the color selection up into the upper left quadrant like so. Hit OK to confirm your selection. Now we are going to confirm our size and that it is on the outside of the circle. For me, it is five pixels. This next step is going to confirm that we are only using the thin line as opposed to the shape of the entire circle and we are going to rasterize the layer style. If you do not rasterize the layer style when you go to erase the layer, you will end up having the stroke follow the pattern of what you erased. However, if we rasterize the layer style, you can easily erase the parts of the halo you don't want and it will become a free form object. At this point, you should have a beigey tan colored halo based on the model skin tone in a three to five pixel size or width, depending on the size of the image that you are working with. There should be no effects on it or anything else. In this next section, we are going to create the light and dark sections of the halo, and we will be stacking the halo multiple times in order to create that effect. With the halo layer selected, click on the layer style menu and select multiply. This is going to be the base of our halo. Duplicate the layer by clicking Ctrl or Command J. With the duplicated layer selected, Change the layer style from multiply to color dodge. Change the fill percentage to adjust the intensity of this base layer of the glow of the halo. This will change depending on the color of your background. For reference, mine is set to around 70%. Duplicate your color dodge layer by using Ctrl or Command J and then reduce the fill once again. We are looking for midtones here as opposed to highlights, so adjust accordingly. Add a layer mask to your topmost color dodge layer and begin to paint with black in order to reveal the darker sections underneath. In this image, the light is coming from the top left going to the bottom right, so we will primarily be erasing the right hand side in order to reveal the darker section as though it's in shadow being cast from the subject's hair. 
I personally recommend using a brush that has texture to it as opposed to a soft round brush, as this will make the inconsistencies in the halo feel a bit more like brushed metal. At this point, you can add a layer mask onto the lower color dodge layer and begin painting that away as well. This will reveal the multiply layer underneath looking like the metallic halo in shadow. Duplicate both the multiply layer at the bottom and the color dodge layer on top in order to increase the intensity of this effect. Continue to paint away the light on your halo following the curvature of the light on your subject. Duplicate the highlight layer one more time and you should begin to see your final metallic shine. Metal reflects light in many ways, so I'm going to add in a little bit of shine on the back of the halo as though it's catching the light there as well. Now that we've created a very beautiful metallic halo, we're going to work on the glow effect next, which means we need to group all of the layers together. To do this, click on the top layer of your halo, and then holding shift, click on the bottom layer of your halo. Hit Ctrl or Command G in order to create a group. For extra credit, double click on the name and type halo. At this point in the edit, I decided that I wanted to create a true background rather than just have flat gray. So allow me to work a little bit of magic and we'll be right back with the next steps. With your Halo group selected, hit Controller Command J to duplicate the group, right click and choose the option Merge Group. We will now be creating the glow of the Halo. At the top of your screen, go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. You are going to set the radius to 9.6 pixels. Change the layer style to Color Dodge and add a layer mask. Begin to paint away all except for the brightest areas on your halo. Once complete, drag the glow layer into the halo group, duplicate the group, and once again, merge that group together. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, this time setting it to 20 pixels. As before, set this layer to color dodge. Create an inverted mask by holding Alt while clicking the mask button, and then with white, paint in the areas you would like to glow on the halo. Drag this final glow into the halo group and you should have a fully movable, completed halo. While we could stop here, I'm going to show you a little bonus trick that I use to catch people's eye and make the image blend together a bit better. On a new layer above the subject, select the diamond gradient and sample the color of the halo in the highlight area. We once again want to end up in the upper left quadrant. In this case, I decided to go a little bit more yellow to increase the intensity of the effect. Note that I am at 11% opacity with the diamond gradient selected. Dragging in the same direction each time, create a large and then a few smaller gradients on the brightest part of the halo and set this to hard light. This will create the hazy effect of light hitting the metal and reflecting off of it. Repeat this process on a new layer and change the style to vivid light, which will create the effect of the metal reflecting into the viewer's eyes. This simulates the idea that it is almost too bright to look at. You can control the intensity of this by adjusting the fill percentage as opposed to the opacity. To complete the effect, create one more new layer, repeating the steps from before and setting this layer to color dodge. Group all of these layers together by clicking the top layer, holding shift and clicking the bottom layer and hitting control or command G. Congratulations, this is your final product. Combined with the glow effect that we just added, the halo will now seem as though it is truly a source of light. Feel free to move it around and see if it fits somewhere better in your image besides behind the person's head. And just like that, the official and ethereal fire signature halo tutorial comes to an end. 
I hope you enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing them in your artworks. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I will answer all of them to the best of my ability. If there are other tutorials that you are interested in, specifically in the style of art that I create, please let me know and we'll see if we can get one for you. Thank you all for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will talk to you very soon. I love this fan. <laughs>